what are the things that will future ready our youth and future ready our nation. Mm. At the end of the day, in my opinion, is to create sustainable jobs right, for the for the youth, for mm. the future mm. generation. So social trust will be a key element uh, in the society and to how enable changes to be accepted more willingly. Mm. So that, I think that is the key barometer. So in regard to social trust and the emerging workforce, do you mm. have a point of view on how to better engage them? As, uh, as, as I may suggest, the last thing the youth wants today is a prescriptive model. Mm. Right? Uh, we adults uh, have to assume that we do not know everything. And this pandemic is a one good example that we should stay humble. Mm. Right? Uh, we do not need to know everything. We do not pretend that we know everything. It's okay to learn together. And the youth will be a big uh, uh, body for us to learn from. So the world is changing very rapidly and it is uh, this trust between uh, people like us who are in a position of influence with uh, the rest of uh, the younger population to come up with a win-win solution together mm. to future ready this, uh, this little red dot that we love. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, by, by way of um, being future ready, the work guide, the platform that we are yeah. creating is actually meant to be able to connect um, the emerging workforce mm. to guides at, um, for work because they, they are not familiar, so it's yes. about guiding them yes. there. What, what are some perspectives you think would be valuable for them in terms of guiding them by way of values, you know, yeah. to, the, to be successful in the workforce? Yeah, so uh, together with my co-chair, Delis Boy, uh, mm. we started the Act Tech uh, uh, because both of us are guided by values as parents. Yeah. Uh, we rope in uh, uh, colleagues like uh, Henry Mm. Uh, to help out uh, in the whole process and of course we have the full support from a number of agencies in particularly the Ministry of Education and uh, Workforce uh, SSG. This uh, common value system helped us to uh, go deeper down to find a better way to engage the workforce and one of the simple ideas is to learn from uh, people like yourself who are dedicated to help uh, the next generation in cementing the workforce. I think mm. EdTech has been also mm. positioned as a strong economic driver mm. for Singapore. Mm. Um, and what, what are your thoughts about, on the one hand, it being a way to propel you know, mm. Singapore forward, on the other hand, as a vehicle mm. also for education? Yeah, it's a complicated question, right, mm. because all along, uh, education is viewed uh, more domestic Girly, mm. right? Uh, we focus, rightfully so, uh, on our children uh, in Singapore to do well. Of course, to do well uh, these days means different things for different people. Academic uh, is just one yardstick, right? Uh, I think what we want is to future ready our children not for PSLE, not for O level, not for A level or IB, not f even for university, but for life. Mm. Okay, so lifelong learning is going to be a game changer. Mm. Uh, when I was investing money uh, before I switched career, I tell myself uh, that every day when I wake up, I become cleverer. Right? Mm. And this is a way that I told my children we can be better than AI, artificial intelligence. So we need to embrace it and not to be feel threatened by it. But we have to adapt and we can relearn a lot of skill sets. And, and uh, yes, I know the youth will be uh, more keen to adopt such a mindset, mm. uh, but I believe the older workforce can also adopt this growth mindset. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Lifelong learning is the way to go. I think you referenced that in your book as well. Yes. Um, uh, maybe I will hop on to a question relating to uh, hard work. Mm. Yeah. And I think in Singapore, that value has always been yes. promoted, promulgated. Yes. Um, with, the, with the emerging workforce, um, do you... Do you have any advice? What observations uh, do you have about hard work? So, um, hunger, right? If there is uh, uh, a, a number of key parameters for future success, I think it will be hunger. And the flip side will be resilient. 
and this come together. We see it in uh, many society, uh, even in the Nordic countries where the social trust is huge, right? but hard work is, uh, is uh, not, uh, not easy. Why? But if the uh, youth were able to believe in the goals they set it up for themselves, then mm. it makes a difference. Mm. The key here is for each individual, uh, hopefully with, with your help and with the ad tech help, to find their true passion. Once you're able to find your true passion, it no longer seems like hard work to you. Why well, it could seem like a joy. So mm. work hard along the way and then discover your Yeah, your you have passions. to try and error. There's no shortcut. They have to discover what they like and also what they don't like. Mm. Right? So they will know what they don't like, you eliminate it, and then you narrow down to what they like with the true passion. And then that will propel them right, uh, very high. Right? Uh, because passion is, uh, is, uh, is difficult to hide. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And in relation to trust, how, um, how do you build trust? You know, societal trust, yes. political trust, so, so key. So how does, how does an invi individual build trust so that they can be increasingly successful? Yeah. Uh, I always uh, go for the f uh, fact that it's impossible to build trust immediately, but at least build predictability. At least allow the other party to able to predict you. Okay. Right, and that is one step towards building f trust. Mm. Right, because trust is a very big word, it's a very difficult word. It takes many years to build trust, but at least uh, Singaporean, given our skill set, given our system, we can allow the other party to predict us. And that is a big step, mm. to even for career uh, and job and personal enhancement, progression. Mm. 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 Being predictable, being consistent. Yes. Right. Yes. And yes. what about, um, so I'm going to quiz you on all the four, <laughs> what about risk taking? What, what um, thoughts do you have about how an individual can be um, a circumspect risk taker? If you this uh, I actually uh, experiment quite a few times. Mm. I'm now in this multinational company where I have 30 different nationalities in this office in Singapore. And uh, I think for parents it's common to, uh, to see how uh, the foreigners are a little bit more lax with their children when it comes to safety, mm. right? Uh, in the playground, they are allowed to fall and pick up themselves up again. Yes. They are not wearing shoes, they're very dirty. <laughs> Whereas the Asian or the Singaporean parent will be... Wet wipes. Yeah, will be very angry, <laughs> right? Things like this. So, so what I'm trying to say is that maybe since young, since youth, you can allow them a better sense of risk taking uh, when they understand themselves more by allowing them to play uh, in playground or in sports. So that is a chance to practice risk taking ability. Mm. Right? Uh, my children, uh, even though they are perceived to be privileged, they start work young, just like me. Mm -hmm. right? uh, my son started work in a cafe right? uh, and he has to earn his own pocket money. Mm. So, uh, uh, other parents may say this is too tough, why do you let your child go through 10, 12 hours of work standing? Uh, uh, but yeah, I think that is something for them to discover. What, is, what do you see is the ability to grow risk in that, in, in taking on? It's, it's on more, it's before you can take more risk, you have to understand yourself better. Right? There's a key element to mm, this. Right? Okay. Uh, when I wanted to be the best investor in Asia, that was my goal. Mm. I have to understand myself very well. Right? Mm. And I have to be very disciplined. Right? Uh, there's a set time of sleeping, there's a set time of waking up, and there's a set time of how do I control my emotions right? to be a better investor. Right? Right. There is no shortcut. The current system uh, gives very little leeway for the youth to fail. Right? If they fail, they think that they are a failure, they think they are good for nothing, for everything else, that is not correct. Mm. Right? Uh, it's okay. It's okay to say you do not know, it's okay to be less macho, right? uh, and just accept as it is. Right? I think it's such an interesting mm. observation mm. around um, risk taking and knowing yourself. Mm. That uh, by knowing yourself, you are in a better position to calculate mm. what, you, what you are mm. willing to take on or not take yes. on. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think you've also observed that the the landscape for mm. uh, the younger generation is that it's hard to fail, mm. as in, 
you know, it's, it's not regarded as a good thing mm. to fail. Mm. Um, do mm. you have thoughts around individuals who feel like they actually have failed and it's hard to get back up? I think many of us have failed, right? including myself, right? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, so it's just don't talk about right, in this society. Yeah. Right, uh, and there's no free lunch, right? So uh, maybe uh, more of us should come out and speak uh, mm. of our challenges, uh, which we all have. Uh, we do not need to be be it and know all, right? Um, and then the society can embrace changes. So, for example, uh, I talk about in the book. How come there's no Silicon Valley in Europe, for example? Mm. Right, uh, there's a Silicon Valley. Right in uh, in the west, uh, western part of the US, right, uh, and and yet in Europe you ha do have a lot of research universities that are well known, and yet we they can't build an ecosystem of risk taking, mm. right? Uh, you do you do need a little bit of risk taking and bonus to future ready, especially now. Mm. Right, digitization actually is an equalizer, will equalize many advantage that. A country like Singapore have earlier. As an investor, with your investor mind, when you think about risk taking and mm. you think about um, being able to think of that for the progress of Singapore, the building up of Singapore, mm. what are some of your um, thoughts around uh, risk taking and education and ed tech? How much should we push to try yeah. and how much should we not? Yeah, that's yeah. a good question. So, for example, well, there's a, 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 a debate about, oh, should we teach coding to the kids? What is really important about coding, or more important about coding, is the logical processing of information. That skill set needs to be taught. Mm. It could be taught through coding, which is ideal. It can also be taught through playing a musical instrument, for example. Mm. Right? Uh, so that you set the right mindset for a job like say an accountant or an engineer for example or a coder for example right? that job you need that skill set right the mindset to have to succeed so I think this is something that we may want to think about uh, instead of just thinking oh we just do coding for all the kids uh, and then we tick that box you need a combination of the environment and the nurturing skill set and teachers play a very important role. Yes, right? you mentioned uh, that also. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and I think our system today uh, has been very good, has been very useful. Uh, then let's, uh, let's uh, come together uh, and recalibrate the education and ed tech so that we'll be future ready uh, Singapore. So, I think you had made reference in your book to the fact that values tend to stay over generations. Yes. Yeah. Um, but then also you had made an observation that there could be traumatic events yes. within an individual. Crucibles. Like, yeah. Right? Crucibles, mm. right? So it could be like, you know, um, a demise in the family or yes. family breakups, etc. Do you view the last year COVID as a traumatic event? Yes. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Not just at the individual level, but at the family and also at the societal level. Yeah. So don't, let's ask, don't waste this chance. Right? Let's yeah. ask, don't waste this crisis. Right. Right? I think uh, we right. should come together and also relearn and learn our skill sets. Yeah. How do you see that potentially impacting the values? Like in particular, for example, mm. um, the ones that you had mentioned with uh, uh, hard work, thrift, you know, risk taking and, and Yeah, so I look at my, again, my own company, how we were able to embrace changes. As I said right at the start, nobody likes changes, well, but changes uh, in a pandemic situation, uh, people are more open to change. Mm. But I did not uh, mention an important point, is how much trust your ecosystem have with you before the pandemic. Mm. That makes a dif slight difference, okay. right? Uh, if there is really inherent trust with the ecosystem we view as the management, for example, in a company setting, then these changes will be taken far easier. Right? Uh, then during the pandemic, you try to make the changes. Mm. I, think, I think that is a difference. Right? Uh, prevailing trust. Yes, prevailing trust. Right? If only during the pandemic you show that you care about your workers, right? uh, maybe it's a little bit late. Mm. Right. You have to be consistent, as I said earlier, you have to be able to be predicted 
by your colleagues across nationalities, mm. right? Uh, there are values that is across system and uh, uh, backgrounds, right? Mm. Or nationalities, right? Mm. So, so you, the last thing I want uh, is to negatively surprise your ecosystem, mm. right? So I think there's consistency, and for a firm like mine, uh, it was much easier. Right, uh, for the colleagues to adapt. Uh, it's not easy for everybody, but we try to walk the talk yeah, right. consistently so that during the pandemic it becomes easier. So for example, during the pandemic, uh, spontaneously my colleagues uh, say, okay, let's uh, raise money for Migrant uh, Workers Centre. Mm -hmm. right? So we just started uh, during the lockdown a uh, running uh, club, if you may, and then uh, we clock the distances and we raise money for the migrant workers, mm. just spontaneously. Mm. Why uh, you may say uh, this is usual, but I will suggest to you that you did not, if you did not have the culture to allow such thing to flourish before the pandemic, uh, it is harder because it is being seen as more prescriptive and less sincere. Why? But if you provide a platform to allow bottom-up ideas, then the chances of acceptance will be higher. And this goes back to the original intent of this whole conversation. In a company setting, you can move it from a family setting also to a country setting. Mm. Right? Mm. So you no secret cow, you let ideas flow up. Uh, and if it's good, then we execute it. Why? Doesn't mean that things you have done in the past uh, is useful doesn't mean that it's going to be relevant in the future. Be open. Be open. Yeah, I think that is key. And for leaders like us, and that in the new digitization age, I think this is an important yardstick for mm. success mm. and for fulfillment. Mm. Trust is um, so key in, in the yes. dealings with people. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Chin Hui, for Thank your you. time. Thank Super you. Appreciate it.